So this is a meeting of the Pioneer Valley Regional School District School Committee. It is Monday, November 29th, 2021. It is 7.05 p.m. We are meeting here in the PVRS library. And also we have some of our members on uh, Google Meet. So a link to view the school committee meeting will be on the website at pvrsdk12.org or you can view it on facebook.com forward slash BNC TV. This meeting is being held via Google Meet and in person in accordance with the governor of Massachusetts March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, all right, so we will call the meeting to order via roll call. So go ahead, Raina. Raina Dastu here. Stephanie Winslow here. Karen O'Neill here. And Jim Bell. Jim here. Michelle Jeruso. Michelle Jeruso here. Nathan Schwartz here. All right. Uh, Robin. You're on mute, Robin. It looks like you may have two windows open, Robin. I can see you twice. <laughs> I do see you're here, though. <laughs> so I'll mark you as here. Um, and Jeannie Milton? Jeannie Milton here. All right. So um, absent this evening is David Young and Alan Genovese. I think they had said they had another commitment, and we still are short a representative of Berniston. Okay, um, we did not have any citizens' comments this evening, so I guess we can dive right into um, our business here. Uh, so the first order of business, discussion and vote on process for signing warrants. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of background here, and I'm opening up my chat, Robin, in case you need to send a chat or anything like that. Um, so the process for signing warrants changed once COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So um, it's important that the warrants are signed in a timely manner so that the checks can go out in a timely manner to mm -hmm. our uh, payees. Um, As you know, at the when once our meetings became in person again, we started passing around um, the folder here for to get everyone's signature on the warrants. We need to have all of those before the checks are cut. We could, though, instead um, designate and correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong at any designate me as. Um, the person that can sign the warrants and then they can be reviewed. That way we're not waiting until the warrants are signed just once a month. Mm. Um, and I believe that that's in lieu of the whole committee so that the checks can go out in a timely manner. Yep, I see your hand, Nathan, one second. Um, and I would commit to <coughs> coming to the school to make sure that that happens on like an every other week basis. That way we're not waiting. Um, or I could even stop in once a week. Um, it's on my way home. So I just wanted to have a discussion about that. It had been brought up to us from the admin team, um, the business, business office, business office um, and our lovely Brenda. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just wanting to make sure that we get the checks out in a timely manner. So, uh, Nathan, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I did. Thank you, Julie. Um, so if it's uh, if it's a matter of people um, not being at the meetings, being at the meetings remotely so they can't physically sign it, could they sign it the day the day after or the following day? I mean, um, we all live close to the high school. Those documents could be made available. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly one way to go. We would need to rely upon everyone coming to the school in a timely manner. Um, 
it still won't really solve the once per month checks going out um, unless everyone wanted to commit to coming to the school a couple of times per month, which seems like a big ask to me. Um, mm. that, David? So. David? Oh, you're on mute, David. Still can't hear you, David. It says that you're off of mute, but I can't hear you. Don't see him either. Okay, you're gonna try to call in or something? Okay. Any other discussion about this? <coughs> um, it was my understanding that we should read all the accounts payable before signing something. And so we are relying on one person to do that, or, uh, and we might receive those after they've been paid. Mm -hmm. So what is our role as individual school committee yeah. members? It's my understanding that we currently process some checks, including payroll, before they have been signed off on sure. completely by the school sure. committee. So this would institutionalize that same process uh, twice per month so that uh, it's less of an issue with payroll than it is with some of our other accounts payable, where the need to wait mm -hmm. for a school committee meeting can get us uh, further out than 30 days on a bill. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to pay them more quickly. So this would, um, right, so there are two requests. One is that we have the school committee agree, as is allowed under law, to have one person sign off. Uh -huh. And secondly, that it happen twice per month. Okay, um, I guess that doesn't answer my question. Sorry. <laughs> Which is, I thought we individually or collectively had oversight over what those payments yes, I were asked this. for. And it, it seems like if we do it this way, the rest of the committee has no oversight. I asked, Except uh, after I, the yep, fact. I asked a version of that question, mm -hmm. I believe to Russell, um, and the answer was, uh, it means the school committee is placing its trust in the person, or if there are two people, uh, designated to sign off, and that they believe they will do a good job reviewing the warrants. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I see David posted in the comments here, let's get a DocuSign account. Labor law makes it necessary to meet payroll without a vote or signature. Yes. Okay. That's a good suggestion, David. Um, Nathan, your hand is raised. Yeah, if it's a matter of having to sign um, them a couple times a month, none of us live that far away from the high school. I pass it regularly. Right. I, I believe that we could figure out a way to do that. If something needs to be signed, you could notify everyone and put have a two day window that, you know, you have these two days to get it signed. Thanks, Nathan. Um, Michelle. I like the idea of DocuSign. I was going to suggest that myself. I mean, I, I don't go by the school at all. No. Um, yeah. You know, unless I come to a in in Oh, we lost her. More than one person needs to do their due diligence by looking over everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know there was a couple of times uh, earlier um, that Karen and I questioned a bill. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it has to go by more than one set of eyes. Yeah. There's a lot on those um, accounts payable, line items. Um, I'm just thinking historically because I believe that we are given in our documents, like all of the warrants. Yes. Um, so if perhaps we had the opportunity to review those, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud. Um, yeah, I certainly believe in a check and balance. Um, I'm also 
aware that the first check and balance is our business team. So um, if it's something like the electric bill, <laughs> Oh, well, you know, yeah. things like mm -hmm. that, uh, I, yeah. that you have to sign for. Mm -hmm. um, it's a necessity and the check gets cut. And then if there are any disputes, you know, typically, I mean, I don't think you really do dispute <laughs> on the electric and utilities and things like that. So I really consider our business team as the first check and balance. And then um, my review in, in, with full transparency, unless it was something glaring, um, I certainly wouldn't notice, I don't think. Well, um, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. Michelle, I asked Michelle because I didn't know, one of the payments was made to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and it was apparently from one of the CARES Act thing, one of the ESSER, accounts and I didn't know for instance do we have to pay back money we didn't spend within a certain period of time or why was that that we were giving money back to a fund that we had received from the state and um, so those th those would be the kind of questions I might have and they don't come up very often but I think we you know we should know <laughs> So um, the DocuSign service is a fee for service. Um, I thought that it was free and I learned recently that it wasn't. I looked into this um, actually for our committee and then um, my name got attached and I was <laughs> solicited <laughs> <Emails>. relentlessly <laughs> from the DocuSign people. So I'm going <laughs> sorry DocuSign, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, if someone wanted to perhaps um, look into the DocuSign thing, it'd be more than... We could, the business office can do that. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm getting the sense that the committee would like to have more involvement in the warrants. Um, you know, if, if I'm incorrect, please let me know. Um, or we can entertain a motion otherwise. Uh, David, you said Warwick does payroll every other week. We pay vendors every week. No cost savings, even at our small scale, to making less frequent no savings. So, can you hear me? Oh, now we can hear you. Okay, magic of the phone. Um, so we have outsourced uh, accounts payable and outsourced CPA firm actually use the same firm that Pioneer Auth uses as auditor. And in an effort to save money, I looked at, let's, let's uh, go back to doing vendor payments every other week instead of weekly. And there was absolutely no cost savings either way, it's transactional cost. So um, going from monthly to two week or even weekly, I, I do want to speak to the DocuSign thing. I consider my time worth something, and I consider your time worth something. And it's um, almost a half hour to Pioneer, and I don't find my way there. So yes, mm -hmm. DocuSign does cost money. It's In fact, it costs a lot of money. But I remember at the start of COVID, we had this strange new thing called the Zoom account, and we limited ourselves to, we could only have this one connection. Mm -hmm. I think we need to get over that and do a few things um, that are respectful of our time and our responsibility. Yep, thank you, David. Yep. All right, well then, um, perhaps we can get, gather more information. Um, we'll find out just how much DocuSign costs or if there's other services um, that do that kind of thing. Uh, Jeannie, your hand is raised. Yes, I, I trust Julie to be aware of what money is being sent. Um, and I personally would vote to have Julie as a designated representative of the school committee to sign the warrant. It's just my own personal feeling. Um, and we as a committee would still do due diligence looking at things and if we find something 
then it's our responsibility to no, tell Julie to, to please note. Thanks, Jeannie. Uh, Nathan? Yeah, it's not a matter of trust uh, at, for me at all. It's more of a matter of having as many eyes, sets of eyes, look at documents, make sure they're good, make sure they're in the benefit of the district, right? That's I, I feel that the more people look at it, the better shot we have of doing the right thing. So it's, it's I do want to be clear, it's not a matter of trust at all. Um, I, I think it's beneficial to have, I mean, we're a committee to have people look at it. Thanks, Nathan. Um, I wanted to make one point, David, when you mentioned if there would be cost savings, I don't think we're looking at it from a cost savings perspective, of, but more not to end up in a rear, <laughs> right? Yeah, because we've been having, you know, the, the, some things go out overdue as a result of the timing of the meetings and the timely signing of the warrants by the full committee. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I don't hear any motion. We can continue this discussion at our next meeting. Um, if there's no further discussion. Okay. Um, next really is just to discuss um, the letter of intent or letter of interest from our interim superintendent Kinsella. Um, her interest in wanting or in pursuing the, the permanent role. Um, I believe that you all um, have a copy of her letter. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted everyone to know, um, I spoke with uh, several people, you know, including our legal counsel, including our uh, overseer, Rick Kingsley, um, about the timing you know, of and what the process would look like to move an interim position into a permanent role. Um, you do not need to reopen the entire process, you know, if this is something that we wanted to pursue. Um, so that's an important uh, point to make. And really, I wanted to make sure that the committee um, understood interim superintendent Kinsella's wishes um, in a timely manner, but that the guidance that I've been given is perhaps to wait for the first review period. Um, you know, that way that we, we give um, you ample time, you know, to accomplish uh, more, or not that you haven't already, but <laughs> you've been putting out a lot of fires ever since you hit the ground running. So, and it would give us and the community an opportunity to have more space and time to, to see what, um, you know, and perhaps hear about your goals and, and things like that. Um, Robin. Can't hear you now. Are you going to call in? All right. Is there any other discussion? Um, Alan? Can you hear me? Yes. I have an echo on my end, but if you're okay, I'll. Yep, go ahead. Oh, we looks like we lost you, Alan. You were, it was working. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. I'm gonna turn my light down. How about now? Yes. yes. Okay, so I like your um, opening comments and I wanna make sure uh, that we maintain our integrity and uh, follow through as a committee. The mm -hmm. Um, previously, there were statements made that what we would do, and then uh, there were a number of things that uh, were not followed. So I won't get into that detail. I think we owe it to the superintendent, who is um, off to a fantastic start, to um, continue what she's doing until you know you set up that process, and it can be sooner than later to do a review of her, so that there is an evaluation, and we're basing it on 
um, uh, the, the full board weighing in. I think we owe that to the community and we owe it to her. I do think since we did say that we would do a search that we could certainly advertise it wouldn't take a lot of money to do to see who might be interested we have um, we would put out there you know what we're looking for and if we do that uh, that paper screening and it is clear that um, when when we uh, compare that to our interim superintendent if um, she is a superior candidate or certainly a candidate that is uh, has has a lot more to offer and and therefore we do not uh, go forward with actually doing a screening of other candidates that we make our decision based on who has uh, applied then i think that from a community perspective it is clear that that uh, she has earned the job that the review has demonstrated she has earned the job and that, um, and then the committee can, you know, act accordingly. Um, I, I think we would maintain our integrity, and I think um, we would be doing her a tremendous service, uh, both to her professionally and uh, in, in also uh, in our work as a committee representing the community. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Um, I see. I see Michelle's hand is raised. Robin's hand is raised, and Jim's hand is raised. So we can go ahead, Michelle. Okay. I appreciate um, Patricia's intent in letting us know ahead of time, but I do agree with some of the comments that Alan made. Um, while this is a professional uh, position, highly professional, um, we haven't even gotten to a three month um, period to really evaluate what the community thinks, uh, what the staff thinks, and what we feel um, as a review. And, you know, we don't have to have a very lengthy re review like we did um, for a superintendent uh, schedule, but I think we need to document um, our observations of her. And Alan, I like the word integrity. We need to uphold our committee's integrity, I believe, in the process. Um, so I think the advice that you got was very good advice, Julie. And it doesn't mean that we don't have an intent going forward uh, with Superintendent Kinsella. Um, but I think we should wait. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, Robin. Hi, is this working? Yes. Great. Um, so I guess my, I agree with um, what everyone is saying. But I, the other piece I'd like is somebody to give me the evaluation tool um, and as it's ongoing so that we could, you know, I could keep um, kind of like things written down and concerns and, or things that I really like. So that's a request that I would have. All right, thank you, Robin. I can answer that. Yeah, um, go ahead, Karen. Okay, um, the curriculum and um, personnel subcommittee is the one that handles the uh, superintendent's evaluation and midterm review, which is what we've been calling it. And um, Patricia has emailed me her goals and what would be benchmarks for meeting those. And um, I've looked them over. They look very good. And she will present them at the next, at the December um, meeting. Uh, generally, the midterm review is in February. And I hope that sounds reasonable to people in the, in, on the committee. Uh, that the documents for that are available on the DESE website under superintendent evaluation. If uh, Robin needs uh, uh, more specific 
um, internet address. I'll try to get that to her. Is that okay? Yep, Patricia. Thank you, uh, Karen. There are two different superintendent rubrics right now. One of them is, uh, was developed uh, or last revised in 2019. There's a newer version that I think may be more helpful to the committee, oh, really? and that was piloted last year, and I've created a single document that has links to various resources for the committee, so I would be happy to reshare that, Karen, Great. for you to send out to the committee so that uh, folks can see in one thing. So I've, I've, I've made um, uh, edited versions of some of the core DESE documents related to superintendent evaluation, kind of stripped away some of the extraneous material so that it's quicker for people to read. So I'll reshare that. That's great, thank you. Um, next we have Jim and then Alan. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I actually put my hand down. I, oh, sorry, um, Jim. No, it's okay. It's all right. Um, Alan pretty much said it for me. It's um, it's soon, and to to be respectful to everyone, including Patricia, in the process, we we need to wait and do our evaluation. Thanks, Jim, and Alan. Yeah, I'm not sure how I want to frame this. Um, yes, the curriculum and personnel committee has done, you know, uh, been in the main part of this process in the evaluation and then bring something forward. But I think we're in a different place than that um, because we're not just evaluating as an ongoing process of a superintendent. We are looking at an interim superintendent who has come in and provided strong leadership. And this evaluation is going to have an impact on perhaps going from an interim superintendent to a permanent superintendent. And um, I'm assuming if that were the case, it'd be a long-term um, contract that would be initially offered. So I think because of the weight of what we would be doing moving from interim to permanent if that's what materializes that it should not be just the um, personnel and, and um, uh, curriculum and personnel subcommittee and I understand we have a policy that that uh, guides us through this but I want to point out this is a unique situation where we're moving from a, uh, into a, a full-time position that, that could have the weight of that. So I would ask that we um, okay. involve the full committee in, in it that. Is. It is. Yeah, I would just want to clarify, Alan. So the curriculum and personnel subcommittee would only be um, working on the evaluation process just as they would every year for the superintendent role. That, is, that has nothing to do with Patricia's intent um, of wanting to become the permanent position. That will be a full committee discussion, 100%. So, so that would mean then um, that the superintendent would review this document uh, that she would suggest an evaluation, and then if the curriculum and personnel agrees with that, then that's what will be brought forward to the full committee. Am I understanding that correctly? The, no, uh, I, I don't. I don't think so. So, just as we did last year for our previous superintendent, you know, the evaluation process, the annual evaluation, which Karen said typically happens in February. Patricia has sent her goals pertaining to that superintendent evaluation. And Karen was stating that, um, you know, Patricia will read the goals at the December 9th meeting, and then we will then begin the process of evaluating the superintendent, independent of the situation where we, she may be looking for a permanent role. And the full school committee is involved in putting together that evaluation. Everybody on the 
committee, school committee is a part of that. And is there a timeline that uh, we are looking for this to happen? Are we looking at March? Um, what, what are we looking at well, for the timeline? Typically, we uh, send out to you the evaluation tool and you will have already received Patricia's goals and how she intends to meet them. She will have an opportunity to present evidence and then you will have until some time within two weeks of completing that evaluation. Then um, the chair and I as chair of that subcommittee will compile and present the results of the uh, collated evaluation. So thank you for that explanation. My question is how many months will transpire before we get to that? I like Robin's comment about knowing the goals and knowing yes. um, what that evaluation instrument will look like. So if we could get that sooner than later, that would be terrific in helping us shape our thinking over the next few months. But I'm assuming there's going to be a couple months before the committee then uh, completes its yes, uh, individual as, evaluation. You know, as I said, February is traditional for that. And that is three or more months away. All right, are there any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, go ahead, Jeannie. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I think we need to advertise for the position. Well, because the transparency we said we were going to and that's not going to candidates are not going to happen overnight so i think that what we will do is so the purpose this evening of of this item being well actually it was the purpose of it being on our last meeting i wanted to make sure that i was sharing with the full committee the letter and like i said i did um inquire as to the process as as far as a letter of intent to go from a interim position to a permanent position so um we are truly in the information gathering stages it was suggested that we at least wait as i said um through the first evaluation period before we then discuss um how to proceed so there will be many many more discussions about this in the coming months. Did you have your hand? Okay. Uh, Alan, your hand was raised? Yeah, just to that point, if that was Jeannie talking, I wasn't sure who was who made that comment, but I absolutely feel for our own integrity that we would advertise. We could do that concurrently. Um, and uh, we see who applies, and then we, um, we continue with both processes going forward and then we have information to make a decision yeah thank you i'm just checking do i have audio now you do yes <laughs> it's, on, it's on my phone though i need a 12 year old all right thank you you're welcome <laughs> um you always have audio in person i just have to make that <laughs> nathan Uh, yeah, I just would like to get the superintendent's goals kind of as, you know, as soon as we could so that we understand them and can start evaluating them. December, okay, yeah, we were, we December were going, 9th. Yeah, so we, she was going to present okay. them at our next meeting, um, but she can even send them out via email this evening if everyone would like that. Yeah, that'd be great. Just make sure, just another gentle reminder not to hit ever hit reply all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else or can we move on to number three? All right. So number three, actually, um, we needed the, the 
Policy Subcommittee to meet again in order to discuss and um, present a recommendation to the full committee regarding the use of private vehicles pol policy specifically for the parent and guardian and actually probably the students as well. Students, yeah. um, given the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving holiday mm -hmm. and by the enormous amount of meetings that policy subcommittee has been having as of late, they were not able to meet, um, which to me is completely understandable. Um, so we, we, we will need to table this discussion and vote um, until that committee has had an opportunity to meet and discuss and, and give a recommendation to the full committee. Karen? Yes, would it be possible for me to um, question people about their availability right now while we're here together? I actually, I'm going to want to talk. Can we wait until the meetings? Yeah. Number six? Yep. Okay, great. All right. Um, and our last order of regular business on the agenda here is the discussion and possible vote on sixth grade transition update. Um, we have had this on the agenda the past couple of, <laughs> of meetings and um, Patricia was able to give us a nice synopsis of um, the work that she has done thus far and that essentially has been reviewing the, mm -hmm. the, the large amount of work that's been already done um, regarding this. So is there anything new to share? No, uh, I would like to reiterate as um, I did receive a comment in regards to the information I shared um, maybe two meetings ago and then I shared information in the S'more newsletter. Um, there was someone who uh, let me know they felt like a decision had already been mm -hmm. made. And while my comments were straightforward, uh, I reiterate it is not my decision to make and I will faithfully and to the very best of my ability administer whatever decision the committee makes. This is your call, with uh, your call in the context of the state makes the final call. But mm -hmm. I will, whatever you decide, I will enact. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, hi, Renee. Okay, so Alan raised his hand and then Robin. So go ahead, Alan. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, so yes, the committee did make a decision and rescinded it and then came back and made another decision. I want to say that the decision we made did not have um, all of the pertinent, pertinent information that we had been looking for, at least some members had been looking for. And I'm not sure what that vote would have been if we had had a thorough review that our uh, present superintendent has provided. And with that information, um, I think it's important that we revisit that decision. Uh, we had some misinformation. We had, mis we had information that was missing and was never provided. And um, it ended up with the committee uh, deciding to, to vote to go forward. She has filled in the gaps for us with new information that I think is critical in, in going forward. So we should be able to go back and say, now that we have a better review and understanding of the consequences and of the expense and so forth and the number of things that still have to be put in place, um, it would make sense to postpone that and reconsider or, or review uh, perhaps a, um, a more thorough understanding based on the information that the superintendent has provided. So we made a decision without all the information. We now have much more information. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ellen. So Robin has her hand raised. 
Um, Jeannie has her hand raised and Karen has her hand raised. So go ahead, uh, Robin. Hi, um, it was me that had that concern. I just, you know, I'm will more than willing to own my concerns that I had, um, Pat. Mm -hmm. So I, I just have a, a few things, you know, clearly, um, there was a lot of time over the last three years spent on this decision. That doesn't necessarily mean at this moment that I disagree in any way with what you're saying. I just felt like, um, I felt like, you know, all that inform. I want to be transparent, but at the same time, it seems like information that we should have had for, not first, but just, it just felt uncomfortable to me. It didn't feel, it felt like it was, you know, but I'll follow through with this if that's what you want me to do, but I don't think it's a good idea. And I clearly, um, clearly it may not be. Um, my other concern was, um, you know, the sixth graders that, you know, um, who thought they were moving up um, and all the people that worked on these committees and, um, you know, and did committee work stop like a month ago? before this decision was made? I mean, are we just in a holding pattern? And if so, we lost a month anyway. So those were concerns I have. I mean, um, we have to do ultimately what's best for the children at this moment. Um, so I don't know. It just, it seems like every time we make a decision, we revisit it and we don't seem to make great progress. But part of that, I do believe is what Alan said, we really, um, we lacked leadership for the last um, six months, or at least the time that I've been on here, and I'm looking forward to a different situation from this point on. Thanks, Robin. Uh, Jeannie. There are two things that I've been thinking about since we started the discussion. And number one is any, has, Patricia has, Anybody in administration or TMS addressed any of the questions from Desi? Mm -hmm. And number two, have we has the budget been relooked at to see what the um, what financial gains or, or losses, which shouldn't make our vote different or decide our vote, what those fit facts are because. We all questioned when we were given the initial um, presentation by the previous administration and budget committee um, was that it was a great financial move for the district. And a lot of us really are still questioning that. To the first question, Jeannie, no. There was no response from the district to the department in relation to its February 22nd, 2021 letter with the list of questions. Secondly, I did work with Principal Burke and our business colleagues from TMS to take a look at the finances and uh, the program was not sufficiently developed for us to do a really great analysis of the money. So whatever projections were shared with the committee, I, I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but I, I don't think that they are as solid as we would want. Thank you. Uh, Karen? Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, it, I'm feeling like I don't really have much new information and that the questions from the commissioner do need to be addressed before we can move forward. Um, I'm not sure what that means at this point as far as what's going to happen next year, but I do think we need to be provided with more information. I also recall that we were to have had a re regular agenda item about the progress of the committee that was overseeing planning for the uh, transition. And I haven't seen that. I, I haven't seen that for two, three, maybe four months. That has not come to us. We definitely need to have more information before we can uh, make a decision and it's 
It's going to be December tomorrow. Day after tomorrow, sorry. <laughs> um, I agree as well in the sense of I don't feel like we have given um, our interim superintendent really the opportunity to assess the situation. The assessment that's been done is, is as far as the timeline pertaining to this happening in the fall of 22. That's when it was supposed to happen, right? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was what would need to happen in order for the committee's vote of this sixth grade move happening in the fall of 22. You were kind of looking at where is it, where is it right now? Mm -hmm. And from what I've gathered, um, your assessment is that it would be too difficult to pull off <laughs> for the fall of 22. And that from what you've seen, as far as the financials are concerned, it's not an accurate look at what the true cost will be because the process only went so far. Yes. Okay. So given that, we, I think we have a couple of options, really. Um, for one thing, we have an enormous amount of people power that has been spent on this already. Um, all of us have spent an enormous amount of time researching it, you know, um, responding to our communities regarding it. Um, I do think that it's interesting that it has been on the agenda the past couple of agendas, and we haven't heard from mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. regarding it. Um, I, I, I really kind of expected there to be citizens' comments this evening, knowing that we, the uh, S'more newsletter went out, <laughs> and uh, this was on the agenda. Um, so I feel as though it was a regular agenda item until we lost our superintendent. Um, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And then our interim superintendent has had to deal with the myriad mm -hmm. <laughs> of uh, issues involved in running the school right now. Um, so it's kind of like the, it had to become reprioritized. So at this point, are we looking at discussing holding off on it again or re-looking at it all together or squashing it all together? That's, I'm not quite sure. Julie, if I may, I, I believe that it did not come up in school committee minutes from last February through either July or this fall. So it was last on the agenda or in the minutes? Uh, last February on the 25th, uh, 2021, when the committee voted, three days after receiving the state's letter, the committee voted to postpone for a year. And I believe it was not, it did not come up again in the minutes, either until the summer or, or this, I think this fall. Okay. It was July. Was July? July. Yeah. Okay. We got, yeah. So we went from, so we didn't discuss it March, April, May, June. July. Right. And then July. August. July is when we. September. And then I, we I maybe had, a, had another update I remember, in September. I remember the previous superintendent um, and Mr. Burke mm -hmm forming the committee and meeting with the there was work that happened behind the scenes but it, it, it doesn't show up in the minutes right. of mm -hmm. the school committee mm -hmm. we were but, not given regular the, updates is what the sixth grade transition committee was formed and met yes, yes. so we that would be in our, our our meeting minutes yes. no but they should have minutes yeah they should have minutes but Kevin also came to the meeting to give an update yes that. yeah 
Okay, so maybe they weren't reflected in the maps. Okay. Yeah, it could have been, but yes. I remember Mr. Burke and and um, the previous superintendent giving updates, but go ahead, Rena. No, I was gonna say that we, we as a school committee did not receive updates on a regular basis mm -hmm. as was requested. Mm -hmm. um, and it's concerning to me that those, the letter from Desi was, there was no Response, response to that right. in, the, in, in the intervening months, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it feels like it's this is a late late in the game to to be yeah. responding if we're hoping to do this in September. Right. Um, that that just doesn't give the administration enough time right. and resources to be able to respond to get Desi's approval, and we can't move forward until we get Desi's mm -hmm. approval. Um, a year ago, I felt like there wasn't enough of a plan, right. and I also and We're here back we are a year later. Again. <laughs> I feel like that plan has like, not been developed. The time frame is short. Sufficiently. Um, um, so, Robin, you have your hand raised, and Alan. Yep. Um, I, I guess my question is, where's the transition committee tonight? How come there is no one here? from that like where's kevin where's the people that were supposed to be doing this work and did that work stop a month ago i mean i don't really understand and that committee was formed and i i remember a couple of times it being on getting some updates that he would say what was going on mm -hmm. that they were meeting with parents that things were moving forward i do not remember any reference to the desi letter um but i mean where are they tonight i don't understand we have a committee that this is directly working on this mm -hmm. Do you want to say something, Stephanie? Well, sure. uh, she's uh, other people raised their hand oh, first. Sorry. I'll get you in just one second. So uh, I didn't ask the committee to join us tonight. When I began really digging into this, uh, I met with the committee. Um, I met with some staff. I met with the admin team. And then when uh, I realized the impact of the February letter from Desi, um, it became clear that uh, further movement forward by a transition committee would not be an effective use of anyone's time, given that these larger overarching questions were outstanding, i.e., we hadn't responded to the state, and this, we had no authority, as it were, to move forward with the transition until we had the state's approval. So having that committee continue its work without answering all of the questions in this letter just didn't seem wise. So if, I, I wouldn't ask them to show up tonight because. Yeah. Um, can, I, I, can I ask a question to that though? Who, who I mean, th and this is not reflected back to you or, or anything, but who, who would answer those questions if it wouldn't be the committee? Like, so I, I discussed this uh, when I presented in October. Uh, okay. um, and I thought Which, by I, the way, I, we never got the minutes for that meeting and that is not a good thing, but okay. Um, it would take my pulling the principals and some other members of the administrative team out of their buildings for multiple work sessions. Um, I had said maybe four, two and a half hour sessions, rereading the questions again. I think it's more time than that. And I wasn't willing to disrupt their work to that extent without the school committee's guidance. Uh, I, I needed to know that the school committee understood exactly where we stood with the state and that I needed guidance from the school committee about how to move forward with this. Okay. Uh, Alan and then Stephanie. Oh. You're on mute, Alan. All right, well, we will move to Stephanie and then Alan once your audio works again. Okay, go ahead, Stephanie. Um, Patricia kind of answered it for oh, me, but good. I do know Can that there's a parent in the- Yes, hello. Oh, one second, Alan, Stephanie's going. I know that there was a parent in the community that was asking about what about the transition committee that they had been on and all of a sudden the meeting stopped so they weren't sure what was happening. So that was just what I was gonna say is that the work had stopped. Okay. Mm. Okay, I have a, can you hear me now, Julie? Yes. Okay, so I have a number of um, comments and I, I hope perhaps can provide a little direction. 
first of all, I do want to recognize all of the people that have been involved in the uh, transition and the research and the commitment they have to um, to bring this eventually to fruition. Um, so I mean no disrespect to- Oh, uh, your, uh, your audio is cutting out. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, let me, so I think that the superintendent could send a letter to Desi and indicate, obviously, we're in receipt of, of your memo and all the questions you raised, and thank them for providing a blueprint of the um, process and the things that uh, Desi has pointed out that they would like to see as we're going through or we continue or continuing this process. And so that in itself can be the response that um, we'll use this document to, um, to and, and implement, we'll turn their questions into actions that will be included going forward. So that's a nice, simple way to address it. And I think the superintendent can look at each one of those and, and be able to, instead of trying to go back and kind of answer what might have happened or what we thought we were doing, let's go forward and use those as a lot of more community involvement. They were asking about what what, uh, what is the community involvement. <coughs> we can just simply say we'll use that and, and make sure that that's part of the process. So that's <coughs> part of this is that um, given the enormous amount of things that the superintendent and the administrative team have to do right now, um, I would think that perhaps like a motion to to um, table this decision um, in item until the superintendent has an opportunity to bring it back in a form uh, with more information, more comprehensive review for the committee to look at and understand, ask questions, make comments, and then if you're so inclined, uh, the, the administration would then go forward with the uh, with the intent of moving the sixth grade if that continues to be the wish of the committee after she has fully vetted this and the process that would be used. So there's just too much going on to ask the administrative uh, team and the superintendent to be doing this now. And we've all learned hurrying something doesn't doesn't uh, do well. So I would be willing to make that motion at some point to simply table this decision and, and this item until um, the superintendent brings it back with more information and a recommendation on how to proceed. And I can't hear you, Ellen. Uh, I, I hope she doesn't spend time trying to respond to that letter from Desi and rather do it in a more appropriate approach. And thank them for it. Thanks, Alan. Um, we have Michelle and then Robin. Well, I was going to um, move along, move this along and make a motion to, it doesn't matter to me, and definitely postpone until further plans have been made and we've answered Desi or if people rather delay. But I'd rather say postpone um, at this point. I really need much more information um, before I would vote um, to move this forward. So I'll second that the, motion. But we already have something that was voted in. Mm -hmm. So I, I will need some guidance from my more senior uh, committee members. How do you, how do you, Move well, forward. the correct way to do this at this point would be to rescind that motion, and the understanding would be that the superintendent would be coming back with a recommendation and more information. But if you want to do it by Robert's rules cleanly, you would someone would make a motion to rescind. You'd need a two-thirds vote, and then um, she does not have that pressure to deliver by June. I'll make that. I'll second that motion. Um, 
So there's a motion to rescind the original vote of the sixth grade transition to happen in the fall of 2022? I think, I think I, maybe the original vote had been to have it happen earlier and then it was postponed for a year. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, yes. that vote to postpone took place on February 25th. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, so that was the vote to postpone until. Mm -hmm. So right now on the table, the sixth grade was supposed to be transitioning as of the fall of 22. Yeah. Of course, pending Desi's approval, which we do not have yet. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I have to say, I, I want to, I want to hear from Patricia if she thinks that this is a good idea or not. Not tonight. Um, and I realize the amount of work that will go into that for you to even make a decision. You know, it's an enormous amount of work to consider removing a grade from the elementary schools, bringing it to this environment, and then creating a, a completely new model. Um, I do have significant concerns over the uh, space constraints at the elementary schools and our area of growth yeah. is in pre-k and and those early you know um, grade levels um, so when you see class sizes upwards of 30 or you know like that that's or I don't know how much they have 20s 26, mm -hmm. 26. Um, with 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 many with many classrooms, significantly yeah. lower than that. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something that was very clear, at least to me, the first time around, is that we needed space in the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. That's that's what was really focused on, and from my opinion, um, and that was a large part of the reason why I voted the way I did. So um, I would want Patricia to assess the situation, but I completely feel like it, it's not something that is, should happen right now because of everything else we have going on. We're still in COVID, you know, we're still uh, feeling the effects of that. Um, so, I do not want to table it indefinitely. Like that would not be my uh, my vote. Um, and I have concerns that if our vote is rescinded, that it could act essentially end this evening. Mm -hmm. If then we don't, then we would need to vote to have this explored again. Mm -hmm. um, Mary. Yeah, sure. One option would be to say, you know, a, a, a conversation around grade reconfiguration might be better located within a larger conversation around the district's vision for itself and uh, an assessment of our physical plant capacity. So um, while we don't have loads of extra admin, bandwidth this moment, uh, it is, I, I imagine that it is time for the district to do a good self-assessment of its overall programming and its physical plants. And within that, let's have a vigorous, informed, collaborative, inclusive conversation around grade configuration. And based on what we as towns and a community decide we want our schools to look like in 10 years, that will guide a conversation around what grades should be located where. That's a great point. Uh, Robin, your hand is up. Um, yes, I just had a few um, questions. I, I agree with you, Julie. I am concerned about the, um, the numbers. And I, and I do realize that with COVID issues, it does, um, you know, it makes all of this stuff 10 times harder because everybody's pushed to the limit. And so 
and we don't want to do that to our staff. But the other part of it is that because of the space limitations, you know, we do have room at Pioneer and we could space people out better at Pioneer. So that's an issue as this pandemic seems to be with us probably in the fall still, next fall. Mm -hmm. So that COVID issue that's holding us back also could be pushing us forward. Um, mm -hmm. we've, but we've already lost two months on planning. We didn't, you know, we, we kind of dropped, and I'm not blaming this on anybody. I'm just saying kind of lost it already. And I feel like to keep um, saying to Pat, well, tell us what you think. I think you've told us what you think. I think it's clear that you don't, and paraphrase me or stop me if I'm here, that you don't feel it's a reasonable thing for us to do in September um, with all of the um, issues that do need to be addressed. And when you talk about great configuration, I don't, I don't want to be ignorant on that part, but are you meaning like maybe look at, do we have like an elementary school and then a middle like school at Northfield? I mean, is that what you mean by great configuration? Um, yes, so great configuration is which, which schools and which facilities. Right. Which, so sorry, I mean, which grades and which facilities. <laughs> right, so I mean, you could conceivably be looking totally outside the box. I mean, you could mm -hmm. say that one school is elementary and then one becomes four, five, six, mm -hmm. depending. I mean, that's what you're talking about. I mean, that's a whole revamping, exactly, correct? That is that is one possibility. Oh, I'm not saying that yes. you do that. I'm just saying that's the kind of thing that yes. you mean by great configuration. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I don't see how we, I don't see how we can ask the staff, you know, based on the issues that you've risen, raised. Um, but I don't want to, I don't want to rescind the vote because I, I really think that we need to. If we rescind the vote, then we're just back. I'm not, I'm not confident that even the things that you're talking about that we should do would happen, seriously. So I don't want to rescind the vote. I wish there was some other way to word uh, this. David did know in the comments, um, until we answer the DESE letter to their satisfaction, we are paused, which is very true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, you know, so we cannot move forward without the approval of the state. So it's almost by default paused. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, anyway, Alan, your hand was raised. Can't hear you, Alan. Can you hear me now? Yes. I don't know why that happens. Um, so I said I disagree in terms of the yes we have to respond to the state but we do not have to go through that letter and respond item by item i think a generic response that we're in receipt of the letter we've reviewed it we see it as an opportunity to um use their questions as uh as i said earlier as a blueprint to be sure as we move forward with the process um that we will take all of their questions under advisement and uh and and, and, and follow, follow them as a guide. Um, that, that is sufficient in order to do that. Um, if you vote to resent, and which we have a motion in a second to resent, I hope that we are open, all of us are open-minded to look at this with fresh eyes, with the superintendent giving us a full review with the uh, people that are involved in this process, um, bringing all their expertise and information to the table. And they look at the uh, commissioner's letter and they look at the process and the a recommendation is brought forward by the administration on um, what uh, the, the course of action that they would recommend to the committee. It may be a motion to do this or to do this in a combination with something else, but it just gives a nice fresh start, and it doesn't it doesn't saddle her with having to go back and 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 rehash this whole thing. I'm confident that this committee will get a, a really comprehensive review, and we'll be able to look at this with fresh eyes and make um, probably a close to unanimous, if not unanimous, decision uh, going forward. 
So I would ask that we move on this and uh, vote on the what's the motion on the floor and move forward. And we'll we'll take that pressure off the superintendent and she will bring this forward. So I, I want to just address one thing here. It, it is in your packet. Um, the November 9th letter from Desi regarding proposed grade reconfiguration. Um, so Desi states that they were informed that the committee voted to delay the re reconfiguration until fis fiscal year 23. And then they ask, we are writing to inquire as to whether the district has undertaken a further study and whether the committee has a response to our earlier inquiries. And um, Associate Commissioner Sullivan writes, could you please advise as to the status of any plan to reconfigure the district's grade levels? If the district and committee intend to reconfigure the district's grade levels during the 2022-2023 school year, we require a response to our inquiries as soon as possible. So we certainly, you know, that sets us up nicely. <laughs> you know, we will need to obviously respond to that and we can um, respond in a manner, you know, depending on what we decide this evening. I just wanted to make sure we had that for context. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patricia. Um, next I had Nathan. And then it looks like Jeannie. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Um, I guess I pretty much agree with Alan and, and I think <laughs> we're going to move forward with this and we're going to move forward in an informed way and we're going to be able to make the best possible decision. It could be the decision that we wanted to make. It could be a variation of that, right? If, if what's driving this is crowded classrooms in the elementary schools, that's part of the cycle of our elementary schools. Sometimes there's classes that have 30, there's classes that have 10, right? There are creative ways to solve this problem and there's no doubt in my mind, we will come up with solutions to this. But I do need, think, I do need to think that we need to rescind the past vote and then move forward with the understanding and the knowledge that we are gonna move forward and we're gonna look at the best ways to move forward. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, Jeannie and then Karen. I believe that we, that either the committee or Patricia needs to um, send De Desi a note, states, letter stating that, um, yes, we have received the information. Thank you for reaching out to us again, basically acknowledging the receipt of the most recent letter. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. And I think it could be something quite simple. It didn't have, doesn't have to be really long, but it, it behooves us to stay connected with Jesse in a positive way. And that would mean um, acknowledgement of receiving the last letter. Thanks, Jeannie. Karen, and then Raina? Yeah, I would rather see us take a vote to pause um, our timeline in light of what we see now as our obligation to everyone, the students, the rest of the community, the parents, the state, to do the best to figure out the broader picture the impacts, both financial and educational, upon um, several grade levels of students in that wider context. I do not want to see us go back against what we thought was a good idea at one point, but I do think we should um, be open to perhaps finding that that's not quite the best way. After having done a lot more of the work that has been suggested that we do by the state, and I think we all know it has to be done as well. So I'm not in favor of rescinding that vote, but rather a different type of um, motion to pause where we are, take a broader look, and 
try our best in the next couple of months to have a response for De Desi after an initial thank you very much, et cetera. But in a few um, months, perhaps uh, be able to say a little bit more towards at least some of those questions, not all of them. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Raina? I guess um, what I'm hearing is that we can't move forward for this coming September, um, which answers one of Desi's questions mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. November letter. Um, and I guess the question is, how do we pursue what motion we need to do tonight? Is it, if I recall, when we changed the, the timeline, we had to rescind the original vote and then make a new motion to, um, so we do need to rescind that vote, I believe, and then make a motion to pursue um, reconfiguration, you know, options for reconfiguration or, or something to that effect, or? I don't remember if we had to rescind or if we amended. We did have to, I see nods. Yes, we rescinded and then we had a new motion. So it was an, an immediate new motion? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. I think I, I did that. No, don't, no, because we have to vote on call. I don't, I don't recall that clearly. Can someone check the minutes? I don't recall us rescinding that vote. I thought I recalled Russell telling us that we needed to, someone who voted in favor of the sixth grade reconfiguration needed to then make a motion to rescind that vote, to rescind that vote. And I think that was me. Yep, and then, and then to make a, a new motion to right. change the timeline. I can't remember clearly. I remember the outcome, <laughs> but I don't remember the, the steps that were taken. Um, you know, w one big piece here is the community. That's right. And again, I was a little surprised that we didn't have people from the community here this evening um, with this on the agenda. Um, last time, we, when we were discussing this, those that weren't in favor tended to be the ones to um, speak the, like at our meetings via Zoom. Um, <clears throat> so I, I honestly have no idea what the community wants at this point. I, as far as the community is concerned, we're moving forward with this in the fall of 22. Um, so it's, it's difficult for me not knowing what the community wants <laughs> at this point in time. Um, Alan? Can't hear you. I understand the difficulty in this. If you think about this for a minute, it, it doesn't have to end here. Um, you, if, if you get the two thirds vote to rescind this and you have the superintendent um, start to you know, take a look at this, there's no pressure that it has to be done um, uh, you know, for the fall. And information is gonna bring information back and at, at the appropriate time, we can make the correct motion, um, which would be based on her recommendation after she, she has a chance to vet this and, and work with the administrative team and with the community and get public input and so forth. So I'm hesitant about coming back with an immediate um, motion because we can do that at any time when we get the information that we're looking for. So there's no rush to do that right now. Um, the only uh, thing we're trying to do is just to take this off the superintendent's plate and the administrative team. And uh, I think she has made it clear that she would like to look at this from a much broader perspective and, and then share her findings uh, in the future. Um, so yeah, I, uh, 
If there's no rush essentially to make an, another immediate motion, I'm wondering, is there a rush to rescind our current vote? It's, it's currently on pause no matter what because we have not satisfied the DESI requirements. So by default, it is on the pause button has been hit. Um, Robin, your hand was raised. This is kind of convoluted, but, and Pat, this is not, um, it's just like we're asking, you're, right now you're an interim superintendent. We have no guarantee that you're going to be here next year, and we're asking you to take on a tremendous um, project about reconfiguring our entire district. And we don't, and, and you probably, you know, I, have, I just, you're a crazy lady. <laughs> what are you, doing? Um, you know, I just, I, I mean, you, you, you know, I mean, I don't have any reason, you know, I think you're doing a fabulous job, but I don't, you know, I, I don't have any guarantee that you're going to be here next year and you'll be making um, decisions and recommendations for us. I don't know what to do. I don't think we should do anything tonight except answer that Desi letter and see if we, I just don't know how we can vote to rescind or move on at this point. We just need more information. And I hate to have you waste your time getting the information, but on the other hand, if you can totally convince us, you know, get us all convinced there's no way that this is going to happen, then we can make a more informed decision. Um, and, and maybe you did do all that already. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, David and then Patricia. So I would just like to note that on several key votes, we never rescinded, for instance, either of the two votes not to close Warwick, but we plunged ahead into a third vote to close Warwick. Um, so I don't think we should get hung up on all this rescinding. Okay. Thanks, David. Um, and Patricia. Uh, I, I want to make sure that I have clear instructions in terms of responding to the more recent letter from DESI, the November 9th letter. So they want to know about our plans regarding reconfiguration and if we intend to, if we want to reconfigure for next fall, they need answers to their February letter ASAP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if Robin and others, if you are asking me, can we respond to this list of questions ASAP, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. I can't. Right. It no. would take time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, we do have a, a motion on the table, and we have a second. Um, we're, you know, we are actively discussing this. Um, so that's very clear. The sixth grade transition cannot happen <laughs> in the fall because you would not have adequate time to respond to the list of um, questions from DESI. Uh, if the committee said move forward, so this is hard, right? I just yeah. said, no, I can't do it ASAP. <laughs> if you told me to do it ASAP, we would make it happen ASAP, but at, and at significant cost to the buildings, because right. it means right. as right. I'm starting budget meetings, right. uh, and as we're starting negotiations, I would, I'd need to put a stop to something right. in mm -hmm. order to pull the team to respond to this during right. the month of December. Right, right, right. Um, Michelle? Sorry, while well, you've been talking, I've been looking at the February 9th mm. and February 11th meeting minutes. There is nothing clear that we ever rescinded a vote, but um, I, I, I move, see, she doesn't write motion. I, um, I said that I had not received a five-year budget. I had a lot of concerns about the haste of the sixth grade move up and concerns about it being unsustainable. She writes about other people continuing um, their comments, but then she says the vote, O'Neill, yes, Jeruso, no, Knight, yes, and so she gives a vote. That was February 11th. 
So I'm not sure if that was the initial vote or what. So it looks like. Um, oh, wait a minute. Genevieve suggested one option might be to delay the sixth grade move postpone. by one year and undertake further planning. Yes. But it really doesn't go into a vote. So, so I can tell. And, from the and, and did review um, some meetings in order for Patricia to have um, information when she was researching this. Anne writes, um, December, by, by the December 2020 meeting, the committee voted to move the sixth grade up for the FY21 school year. I think she meant FY21. Yeah, FY21. January 2021, a motion to rescind the vote and postpone the move a year failed. Then she writes, the vote to defer to September 22 is included in the 2:25:21 minutes. So it looks like. Okay, I'll look. Yeah, it looks like. I'm waiting. But but as look. David says, I mean, I'm not sure if we're splitting hairs here or not. I mean, I know that we want to make sure that we do it obviously, by the book. Um, but it looks like. From what I can tell, we didn't rescind. We voted to postpone our previous vote. Um, in an interest of time, it's 8.30. Mm -hmm. um, we still need to <clears throat> go over any new business and have our executive session. So we do have a motion on the table and a second. Um, What are everyone's thoughts on that? I mean, we can certainly vote. The vote is to rescind the previous vote of the postponement of the sixth grade move to FY22. Correct? Mm -hmm. No, that's well, FY22. 23. 23. Because mm -hmm. it's fall of 22. Okay. Um, Alan, go ahead. That, I was going to say, that's what we're doing. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. I said, if that's what we're doing, then that's perfect. We, we, we're, we're, um, Taking it off, we're rescinding that vote deposit, and when we get new information, we can make a motion accordingly with with whatever new data we have. So I, we should just vote, and it is what it is, and go from there. I just want to clarify, though, that the vote is to rescind; mm -hmm. it's not to pause. Right. The the motion that's on the table would be to rescind which essentially means wiping that decision out altogether to move the sixth grade. So I just want to make sure everyone's very clear on that. Um, Michelle? Oh, you're on mute. Oh, uh, point of order. Julie? Yes. Okay, I found 225 minutes. Bell moved to rescind the discussion to move the sixth grade in the fall of 2021, seconded by Jeruso. So we did the motion to rescind pass. In February. February 25th. Okay. Minute, meeting minutes. And then what was the new vote taken? Oh boy. It must have been to postpone. Uh, to, to delay the sixth grade move to TVRS Middle School. Townsley made the motion. For one year? Uh, to the fall of 2022 and to add world language. He, he added something else to it. So let's not go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Robin and no, then Nathan, and we just got to be mindful of the time. 
Yeah, just real quick, can I, can we, um, is it possible for me to um, ask to amend Alan's motion to say, to um, postpone um, until, to postpone the plans for the move for the FY23 until um, we have more information or until follow up, or is that not appropriate? You could withdraw your dissent motion and go with that. Um, whose motion was it though? Was it Michelle's no, or Alan's? Alan's. It's Alan's. Okay. I mean, you can certainly ask that, Robin. Um, Nathan? Yeah, thanks, Julie. Um, just because we're rescinding this vote doesn't mean we're not ever going to move the sixth grade. I think people are getting caught up in that, oh, if we rescind the vote, then that th the sixth grade move is done and over with. That's not my intention. My intention is to get the information that we need to, be, to make a good decision. That's, I mean, in, in order to do that, we need to rescind the vote and then start fresh. It's not the end of, of this move. It gives us a chance to get the information we need to make the correct decision. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Alan? And I would agree with that, and that um, along with that will be an appropriate timeline to do so. So I hope if we can vote and move on. If, if we're still in the discussion portion, I, I think there is a big difference between rescinding and postponing. That's how I feel. Um, so I would. Um, what do you feel that difference is, Julie? I, I, I've said it already a couple of times this evening that rescinding it means that you're taking back the decision. Postponing means that you're giving more time and more work to be done with the intention still being the same that it's moving forward. That's, that's the difference I see. May I clarify? Um, Alan and then Michelle. Here, here's what I see as the difference in how you're looking at this. And I may be wrong. Yes, rescinding it means we're taking a fresh look at this on how best to proceed when we have more information. Putting on pause means we are still going forward with moving the student, even whenever the timeline is that we respond to this. It means we're still going forward. And in my mind, it means we don't have an open mind about what motion we might make given a comprehensive review of our total situation educationally and space and programming and so forth. And I would like us to be looking at this from a very open mind with all the information. So there is a very distinct difference between You're cutting out, Alan. We can't hear you. There's a, there's a very distinct difference between being on pause, meaning we're still going to go forward with moving the sixth grade, it's just going to be at another time, versus rescinding this and, when appropriate, making another motion that will have all the information we need to make an intelligent motion for the best interests of all our kids. You can't hear you. I'm going to. Oh, so, uh, Patricia is next, then Karen. I am reminded of what members of the administrative team told me as I was researching the history of this project. And that was that they felt like their process of research into the idea of moving the sixth grade to this building was short-circuited because of a vote that was taken before that committee had finished its research. And so instead of being able to bring their research to some logical conclusion, and we don't know what the results would have been because the process was truncated, the administrative team and transition committee were forced on a dime to move from an inquiry stance into a planning stance. And so all of the conversation that has um, taken place after the vote has been about uh, a decision, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking frankly, I know that, that was taken before the people doing the groundwork were ready for the decision to be made. I'm just reminding 
the committee of what the admin team's perspective has been. Um, Karen. Yes, um, I was on the original committee. So yes, I agree with you that the, the uh, research was rather uh, quick and there were decisions made based on what I thought was not quite complete research. I did offer a few additional pieces of research at a meeting, but that's as far as we got and then we, we, may, we moved on. Um, but back to whether to vote to rescind, I think in the eyes of the public, if they read in the newspaper that we have rescinded this decision, they're going to lose confidence that we are serious about this, that we really want to look at it carefully. Not, not that, I, I don't think rescission says necessarily open mind. I think it says we've done a U-turn and um, we're gonna start over, yes, but I don't think it inspires confidence and I think it will disappoint a number of people. I think we either not pass this motion and just uh, let some of more of the process go, knowing that we're coming up against a deadline that we can't meet, and we will be able to explain that, and we will be able to work and move forward at a, on a bigger picture at the same time. Okay, uh, Claire provided some context with um, the definition of rescind. It is to cancel officially, revoke, cancel, or repeal. Um, and it pertains to a law, order, or agreement. Thanks, Claire. Um, okay, so we have Nathan's hand raised, Michelle's, Robin's, and Alan's. So Nathan. Yeah, thanks. Just quickly, we need to we need to communicate to our stakeholders and to the parents and to the teachers that this is not the end of this. If people feel that way, it is our job to make sure that they know it's not the end of this move, that we are taking a fresh look at it. We have a new superintendent. We are have a lot of stuff on our plate, right? So we're going to we're going to do this. We're going to continue looking to it, but it's not the end of it. It's our job to communicate that. Thank you. Uh, Robin. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, we had a presentations. We had presentations at the school committee meeting from the subcommittee and their recommendations. So, you know, for somebody to say now or to say, oh, well, we didn't, you know, we didn't get enough. I don't know, I'm confused because I remember presentation is about it. I remember many discussions. I remember back and forth. I, I don't see what the big deal, I don't see what the big deal is to just amend the, um, the motion. I mean, if your intent is really to look forward and look into this, then what's, what's the big deal? We can, we, can, uh, we can amend the motion to postpone and then we can, if, if somebody comes off and we've got this fabulous idea that comes out in the end, after more discussion and research and it's like, oh no, we're gonna do this with the fifth and sixth grade, you know, then we can address it then. But if we say rescind, I don't have faith at this point that we're gonna like move forward on anything. We're just gonna say, oh, we're not gonna do that. And then we'll do this again when I'm off the school committee. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave now. <laughs> Michelle. Okay, I've been reading the 225, 21 minutes again. And we did the same thing at that February meeting. Burke noted that at recent MASC training, the terms rescind and reconsider were not used interchangeably. Reconsideration needed to take place in the same or next meeting to an original decision, mm -hmm. while the term rescind would be used if the meetings were further apart. May I suggest that someone write the terms rescind, reconsider, postpone after talking to Russ 
and we have it available at every single meeting <laughs> so that we don't get involved in this discuss long discussion again. Mm -hmm. That way, people would not be afraid to vote on a motion. We rescinded it last time. Like I said, Bell made the motion to rescind. And so it looks to me like we spent a long time on this. Um, so, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a stickler for reading the minutes and making sure that we know what we're talking about <laughs> that we voted before. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, and I, I, I at least was clear on the rescinding and yeah. reconsider part this evening. It's a matter of in the context of our conversation, we're talking only about rescinding the vote. Uh, in the context of February, it was, okay, if we wanna postpone this, we first need to rescind, and then we can make mm -hmm. a motion to postpone for a year. Mm -hmm. That's not the conversation I'm hearing tonight. No. I'm hearing the, only the rescind part, and then, oh, but everybody should be open-minded, and we can bring it up again at any time. Um, oh, no, I'm totally confident in what Patricia said about having a plan for our buildings. I mean, I'd love to hear more on that, but I don't think that's what we're here for. I right. have all the confidence in Patricia and watching her in her two months that she will come forward with a plan. And that is what we need, more planning. So I'm not afraid to bring it up again and talk about it. If we have a good plan and the budget's there, why not be open-minded? Um, next we have Jim and then Raina. <laughs> Bell made a motion to rescind, huh? Mm -hmm. um, you know, folks, we could do this all night mm -hmm. or we could get really clear about what we need, if we're gonna vote, get clear about the words, what we're voting on and please move on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of clarity surrounding um, the motion on the table is to rescind, which means to cancel the previous vote. Um, so that's what, that's the motion that we're going to be voting on. Raina? So I feel that if we vote to rescind, it doesn't mean that this can't appear on the agenda. We don't need to have a mandate to our administration on this issue to say we want to see this on the agenda on a regular basis or we want updates at in a couple of months or whenever you can gather more information i so i don't this is not going to go away if we rescind that vote um, it, it's it's an idea that has some promise we didn't have enough information the first time we took the vote we still don't have the information that we need to have a clear direction for what this needs to do and I think we need to just make a decision. We need to decide on what language we want to use. And then just, it's going to still be on the forefront. Um, Patricia's made that clear. Um, I have confidence that she, as well that, that this will be, we're going to continue to get and in, gather information that it's not just going to go away, which is unfortunately what happened in the past mm -hmm. with the previous administration. Mm -hmm. So, Jim's absolutely right. We have 12 minutes until 9 o'clock. Um, we do have a motion on the table that we either need to decide to amend or move forward in voting on. Um, again, I don't feel comfortable with a rescinding if without the so community's may input. I, may I interrupt? I, I will second the amendment to postpone, to the amendment to the motion to postpone if that's the, the compromise that we need to move forward with a vote. I don't know if anyone gave that mo So we already have the motion. Mm -hmm. So Alan would need to amend. And someone else can't amend this, someone else's motion? No. No, you can't amend someone else's motion. Good. So as of right now, the motion stands. Um, are we having any further discussion? Yes. Okay. So if someone wants to make a friendly amendment to the motion that I made to resend, then I could agree with that. And if Michelle seconds that, 
motion with a friendly amendment, then we can move forward. I, I did make a friendly amendment. I thought I did. <laughs> I didn't well, hear a you second. You did. Yes, Robin did. <laughs> Robin well, made a suggestion. Yeah. It was, wicked, it was friendly. wicked friendly, Alan. It was wicked friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it was as friendly as it could be. Oh, we're not going to do executive so no. what, is your, what is your friendly amendment? That we use the word um, postpone the, um, uh, geez. Uh, I asked that we post, that we use the word postpone, postpone the amendment, the, uh, until Sixth grade we, transition. Look, yes. Yeah. What did I say? I, Until yes, further, huh? Pending further. Pending maybe. further information or, or uh, whatever. But, yeah. you know, I think we're all pretty clear that it's not going to happen mm -hmm. in the fall, but I'm pending further information that we postpone for now. And we take the pressure off of um, the administration in, in, in light of all that is happening mm -hmm. in the district and in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I guess would, it would help me if the district were to say clearly so that I, so that no one perceives that it's my interpretation. Right. Could the district respond to the department saying, um, does the district intend to reconfigure grade levels for the 2022-23 school year? No. I no. need to answer the state. Right. No. The answer to that would be no, I would say. Yes. I, I, I disagree. Wait a minute. What we're asking for is a response to Desi saying that is something that we will take under advisement as we explore um, our, you know, our options. But we we don't have enough information to emphatically say no. We're never going to do that, or we're no, not. No, 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 Alan. She's just the pointed question from Desi was for the 2022-2023 school year, not not the whole not discussion forever. in general. Okay. Yeah, it was only they pointedly asked, "Is it your intention to still reconfigure the district for um, 2022 for next school year?" Next and school if year. so, you have to respond to all our questions as soon as right. possible. Alan, I, I was trying to be friendly. <laughs> no, no, I, I get that. I, I get that. And, and I, if Michelle will agree to that, you know, I'm fine with that. I think the person who made the point that if people read in the paper without the, you know, without the previous knowledge and discussion, that, that there was a, a, a vote of this magnitude and they weren't told that, that that's right. what was happening prior to the meeting. Mm -hmm. I agree that, that that could cause um, you know, more consternation out in the community, particularly for those parents that were really expecting this to happen soon. So I, I think that was the most compelling argument I heard or, or counterpoint I heard to say, okay, let's um, I'll agree, I'll accept your friendly amendment. Okay. And I'll second it. Okay. Okay. So, the vote is to postpone the sixth grade transition um, until further research. How about postpone okay. the sixth grade transition for the twenty two twenty three year? And we are we, and we are looking for more information, and um, in, we have to do all the groundwork for Desi t in order to have it move forward for the following year. If and that that gives us plenty of time. And if, if something crazy comes up that we've got some out of the sky, that's great. Then we can turn around and change it then. In the meantime, we've, we're actually moving forward on something. Okay, so I'm also um, hearing from Patricia here. So how about postpone the sixth grade transition for the 2022-23 school year until further research and discussion? I, I, I think actually that language is, is uh, not clear to our community. If the, if the committee is saying 
we understand we can't respond to DESE in a timely way. We can't, we can't respond to them in a way that will allow them to approve a move for next fall. Mm -hmm. Then I think the, the committee should own that and say that to the community. Mm -hmm. And if, if something else then needs to take place afterwards, then the committee can be clear about that. So is it that the, the sixth grade transition will not take place for 2022-23? and the committee would like xyz to happen um, and that xyz could be uh, further investigation of a grade reconfiguration a sixth grade move or an overall assessment of you know district programming to include discussion of grade reconfiguration okay <laughs> Julie? Postpone the sixth grade transition for the FY school year 22-23 school year until an overall grade reconfiguration discussion can happen. How about? Oh, go ahead. You're muted, Robin. Oh, sorry. How about can be um, presented and evaluated by the full committee? An yeah, overall grade reconfiguration can be presented and evaluated. Presented and and and, 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 and also, it is true that does. Do you want to put in there, Pat, that it can't happen because of Desi? Should that be the first thing that the reason for the um, Postponement is because we cannot respond to Desi in a timely enough manner to get this done. I think that would be helpful. I think it would be helpful too. Uh -huh. I do. It's long, but you can put that at the beginning. Um, okay. Yes. We acknowledge that we cannot meet a the deadline mm -hmm. to provide Desi with the information they need for the sixth grade transition in a timely manner. Therefore, we do what we just said. <laughs> Therefore, we postpone the sixth yeah. grade transition. Yeah. I, you know, we can, you know, we have to own that. It didn't happen, so. Right. Yep. I think, Julie? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think we could save a lot of verbiage be, um, with, with as you, as you, after you get the first part of the motion out to say, saying that uh, the administrative team will present more information in the community. You keep cutting out, Alan. I don't know what goes on. It's like it trails off. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me now? Yes. Um, so I think we could say a lot of baby to just put out what we originally, was originally said and then just say the superintendent will present um, information and that will be taken under advisement by the committee. And that just opens the whole thing up. So we're gonna listen and we're gonna take that all under advisement and end it there. If someone other than me can, can just read a motion like <laughs> a nice clean one can someone uh do we need to take a minute here to come up with one i'm getting tired read, read the first part that you had and then let's just add the second part um due due to the due to um the uh committees and administrations I have to say that if you can take it out if you want inability to meet the DESI requirements to move up the sixth grade for the 22-23 year, at, we're going to post we're postponing that. It, it um, is so I have. Um, we acknowledge that we cannot meet the deadline to provide the proper documentation to DESI regarding um, the sixth grade transition for the 22-23 school year, period. Um, we vote to 
postpone the sixth grade transition until further research and planning can be presented to the whole committee by which will the- take, Which will take that under advisement. And that ends it. Okay. I was saying by the admin team to the whole committee. Which will take that under advisement. That's critical because that means we're going to listen to all of that, take it under advisement, and then we'll do whatever we think is right. Okay. So I'm going to read it through again. Thank you so much, Patricia. <laughs> I don't know if I got it right. Okay. So here is what I believe to be the friendly amendment to Allen's vote. We acknowledge that we cannot meet the deadline to provide the proper documentation to DESE regarding the sixth grade transition for the 2022-2023 school year. We vote to postpone the sixth grade transition until further research and planning can be presented by the administrative team to the whole committee, which will take that under advisement. Perfect. Which we will take. Which we will take under advisement. Okay. All right. So Michelle, you had seconded that, correct? Yeah, I'll second okay. that. Okay. okay. Can we vote? Is there no more discussion? Good Lord. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Raina. <laughs> Raina Dastu, Northfield, yes. Stephanie Winslow, Northfield, yes. Karen O'Neill, Leiden, yes. Uh, Jim Bell. Jim Bernardson, yes. Robin? Uh, Robin Knight Blyde, yes. I, I like the wording a lot. <laughs> Michelle? Michelle Jerusso Leiden, yes. Jeannie? Jeannie Milton Bernardson, yes. Nathan? Nathan Swartz Warwick, yes. Uh, David? David, yes. Uh, Alan? Alan Genovese Warwick, yes. And Julie Burke Northfield, yes. So that is a unanimous vote. Thank you all so much. That was a lot of hard work. Julie, I have to take a I have to head out to Boston, so I won't be able to stay. I think we longer. all need to ship out to Boston. <laughs> We're home. <laughs> We're home. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat> okay. So um, it is. We are overdue here to end our meeting. Um, our next meeting, this states, is December 8th. I believe that, that it should actually be nine, December nine. 9th. Yeah. Okay. It says 9th online. Does it? My packet tonight. My front. Mine's on the back. Well, okay. <laughs> um, Oh, that's the one that was posted. Oh, okay. Um, so we either need to stay and do our executive session this evening, which um, I'm not sure people want to do, or we add it to our next meeting, December 9th. which is, is that next week? No. No. Uh, week after. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. No, it is next week. It is next week. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's my middle guy's birthday. Mm. Our November meeting was on the I little guy's that. birthday. I know. <laughs> um, so, I will entertain a motion to postpone the executive session to our December 9th meeting, if anyone would. Uh, so moved. Okay. Is there a second? I think that was Michelle. Michelle, did you second that? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion there? So we need to vote on moving that, um, and then we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Raina? <laughs> Raina Jaster, Northfield, yes. Stephanie Winslow, Northfield, yes. Karen O'Neill, Leiden, yes. Uh, David? David, yes. Robin? She said yes. I saw her lips move. Um, Michelle? I totally said yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Jeannie? Jeannie Milton Bernardston, yes. Nathan? Nathan Swartz, Warwick, yes. 
All right, looks like Jim left. Oh, darn, I need to get the meeting. And Julie Burke, Northfield, yes. Okay, and Stephanie? Sorry, I did have other business that I wanted to talk about. Um, I just had a question. After the last meeting, the student rep had announced that there was gonna be no more indoor track for the season. And I was just wondering if there was other options that were explored to see if that could happen. I know that they practiced last year during COVID. I didn't know if there was any reason why we were canceling it other than Smith College not being available. Mm, I hope I get this right. Smith College, or is it Smith College or Smith Academy? Smith College. Is not available and I think we haven't, as of the other day, we hadn't heard from the league whether the league, Karen, have I got this right? That whether the league had made the decision about having the season. They were okay. still exploring options. Okay. Yep. Okay. I do happen to know that there is a running club. That was my next question. Um, so for the running club, the is there thing. an advisor who's on that or a chaperone that will be yes. with them? Okay. And then another question I have is about liability on that. If the student should get hurt during the club, is this an approved club that has insurance if something should happen? I sure hope so. Okay. Um, but I will certainly check. Um, there are other clubs, like yeah. bike club. Yeah, you know. I would like to um, make it clear that um, indoor track isn't just running. There are many <laughs> other events, and last year they trained, even though they couldn't compete, to keep in shape and hone their skills and so forth. And so a running club is not a substitute mm -hmm. for indoor track. Mm -hmm. That was gonna be my other thing, is, is there an activity for the field events who may not mm -hmm. be a runner? They are I'll find out. field event kids. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, given right now we're in COVID, any normalcy for these kids that we can give, why not? Right. And Stephanie is a former track <laughs> star. Shot. <Are> you? <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that a, perhaps our athletic, our new, our new athletic director could yeah. address. Yeah, that'd be good. Thank you. I thought you were going to make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> oh wait, no, Robin has her hand raised. Sorry, Robin. Oh, Robin? Oh, she's saying okay. she's oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second to adjourn? I'll second that. Second. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, Raina. Raina Jasser, Northfield, yes. Stephanie Winslow, Northfield, yes. Karen O'Neill, Leiden, yes. Uh, David. He's gone, I'm sure. Robin Knight Leiden, yes. Michelle Bruce Leiden, yes. Nathan? Nathan Swartz, work, yes. And Jeannie? Jeannie Milton Berlinston, yes. Great. And Julie Burke, Northfield, yes. Great. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week.